Good morning, everybody. It's Sunday, October 15th, and uh, we're back out here for a couple hours to work on the trailer. Uh, got a lot of cool stuff going. Um, I did decide to go out of the box a little and go with a bigger tire like I talked about. And with the bigger tire, it's going to sit. I wanted to go on a 7-inch wheel. So I got spacers to go from a spacer adapters to go from a four lug to a five lug, four on four to five on four and a half, which is really common trailer size, the five on four and a half. Uh, I don't have the wheels here at the house. I have them up at my shop still. And I'm going to put tires on them this week and bring them down. But I do have the adapters. A um, little tricky to find that four to five lug conversion, but I did find them on Amazon, I think. So I'm just going to uh, weld some of the top lap joints where the cross members bolt to the frame rails and I'm just going to go over some of the prep on how to do that. I'm not an expert even though I have said I welded in the pack past I just learned from YouTube and people and and um, so again not an expert hope I'm doing it right so I'm just going to show you how I'm prepping those joints uh, for the weld. So this is one of those lap joints here that's bolted together you can see all that paint there I'm told that you want to get, you know, down to bare metal, no oils and no contaminants on the metal. So I started using a, a buffing disc, but I just went to the wheel, the cutoff wheel, because it works a lot quicker. So I'm trying not to take off a lot of metal there. I'm just trying to get rid of the powder coating or whatever they have done to this steel here. This cutoff wheel allows me to get this thin little edge right there that would be hard because a buffing or a grinding disc or whatever bends. So that's why I like to use this little end right here. So you can see in some spots it's taken off some of the metal, like that sharp lip's a little more dull there, but we're down to the bare metal, which I think is what's most important. And then I always try to prep a little bigger than the area I need to weld. So we'll go off, go off the edge a little bit. Anyway, that's how I've been prepping them. Hey guys, it's been a couple weeks since I've been able to post, been really, really busy at work and um, just collecting stuff I needed to get the trailer going even better. So uh, in the meantime, I've done a lot of welding. Um, I decided to weld all the joints in the tongue, that triangle piece in front that's under the frame where you've got just bolts. So I spent like an afternoon welding all that stuff up, making it one piece, and I've decided to run um, also some square tubing from the hitch down the middle and then weld it to some of the cross members on the frame just to give that hitch a little extra stability. As I mentioned before I also was going to do larger wheels and tires and I did get uh, the larger wheel and tire. I'm going to go with a 30 inch tire on a 7 inch wheel so its profile is pretty straight. Um, I went with the Wild Peak Falcon AT3, the new one. Uh, like the BFG, it's got three peak design for traction. And uh, for the money, a lot, lot less than the BFGs. Um, but there, as you can tell, they kind of look like the BFGs, which is cool. 
So, uh, I think for the money, if I didn't go with the BFGs, this was the best alternative. So in the very first video I made, I said I wanted to stay the cheapest I could do it. And um, going with wheels, tires, windows, spacers, the money's adding up. I'm going to put together a list, but it, it's adding up. But it's a trade-off because I want the bigger tire because I want the hubs to spin slower, of course. Um, that's number one. Number two, I would like to get some altitude between the bottom of the trailer and the ground. So some of the places I like to go camping, uh, it's kind of got to wheel it back in there. So I'd like a little bit of ground clearance. And then, of course, the bigger tires are going to cut down on vibration to the camper because you've got a larger rolling surface. So, um, And then you can air them down if you're up in the sand or whatever you want to do. Uh, so the expense of going to the tires, the bigger tires, I think pays for itself uh, in all the advantages that you get with the larger tires. So that's why I went and spent that money on the tires. Uh, and again, to run the five lug wheel, I need to have a five lug adapter since uh, this is a four lug trailer. The problem I ran into, here's the adapter, it's a two piece adapter. You gotta make it a two piece because you're going from four lug to five lug. So you can't drill five holes into a four lug spacer and have it be centered. I, at least I think it would be a challenge. So the first piece is the adapter, <coughs> four lug. Second piece is five lug. It bolts together and your wheel goes here. It looks like about an inch and three quarter. The problem I have is that when you go to mate the two together, you can see it, the lug nuts and the studs do not allow this to mate perfectly up to the mounting surface, which presents a problem. It's gotta be perfect. Um, so I could cut those studs down. I could get smaller lug nuts. Uh, I think I'm multiplying negatives to try to come up with a positive, but I don't like that. So what I've decided to do is I'm gonna yank off the four lug hubs and throw on some five lug hubs and just get a two inch spacer have to have a spacer with these tires because of the wheel width it's so wide if you go right up against the hub the stock hub offset to the trailer the side walls of the inner side wall of the tire is going to be right up against the frame so i got to get a couple inches on each side uh, so that's where i'm at i'm stuck for a little bit uh, in the meantime i did get um, a couple windows for the sides a really good deal um, uh, they're like 25 by 35 i think nice oval corners, so not the old aluminum square edge stuff you find like in a 1967 trailer in the junkyard. Got them for 50 bucks a piece on eBay. Not a bad deal. So I got the windows, tires, wheels. Thought I had the spacers. Some stuck dead in the water. I want to get the wheels all on and everything done because then when I go to do the bed, you know, the, the, um, the first piece of lumber that goes down as, acts as the floor I know what I'm working with with width and all that stuff. So that's where I'm at. I thought I'd just post a quick catch up, let you guys know where we're at. Still on the search for um, item number two to put in the shed with item number one, trying to keep it secret. So anyway, that's where we're at. Kind of at a standstill. Probably be another week or so till I can continue. Got to get the hubs, a couple spacers, and just throw them on there. And then I'll be ready to go.